welcome back to my channel. So today we're at Danbury Common Woods and I get asked quite a lot how I overcome fear doing various features and things like that. So I'm gonna go through a few features today and explain to you what I would find scary and how I actually overcome it because there might be a few of you that are thinking the same thing and are wondering how to overcome it so that you can actually do that feature. The first one I'm going to talk about is steep downhills. Now as you can see behind me, we've got these really steep like canyons they're called here and a long time ago I would never actually even think about hitting that but there's been a few things that I've worked on over the past year or so to allow me to actually go down something that steep. So let's go and have a closer look. So as you can see behind me, it's a very, very steep hill and the obvious things that are scary is the fact that it's steep but it's also quite high up and when you're at the top it looks a lot different to when you're looking at it from this perspective so you might stand at the bottom and think yeah that's absolutely fine I can do that but it's not until you get to the top and then look over that you realise that actually it's a lot scarier than it looks so let's go to the top and I'll show you from up there. This looks crazy scary from up here just because it's so high up and it feels like it would take you ages to get down there but actually as soon as you're in it you're sooner like down at the bottom another thing that i find pretty scary is like the line choice coming into it because as you can see here this rolling is a lot steeper than this one next to it it's a bit more gradual so that would obviously be the easier option to go to but it's actually not because it goes off to one side so you're better off going down this line to get the straighter line out but again like i said it's mind over matter most of the time because this option looks really steep and as you come up to it you can't actually see over the edge until you're actually here so it's about that committing to it but what i would say is if you're going to do something then 100 percent make sure you're committed to doing it because the last thing you want to do is come here and stop right on the edge because it might mean that you're skidding and you put your feet down and then you end up going down it anyway with your feet down. So yeah, if you're gonna commit, make sure you do. Another thing that I wanna say as well is that I've ridden this hill many times now and I'm really quite used to it and comfortable with it, but I can guarantee you that if this was somewhere else, then it would be the same thing all over again. Like I'd be quite scared to hit it because I've not done it before. So take your time with things make sure again that you definitely want to do it and then just send it it actually never gets any easier it's still really really scary that's still actually really scary like I don't do that slope from that steeper section a lot so it's still pretty scary because like I say as you come up to it you can't actually see the bottom until you're in it but it's actually surprising how much you can control your speed with the brakes because I pretty much rolled into it at snail's pace then and was braking the whole way down to control my speed and it also doesn't help that there's a huge puddle at the bottom so I tried to avoid that but still managed to get wet somehow <laughs> but what we're going to do is get another shot from the bottom so Tom's going to go down there and uh, send it from there So as far as steep hills go, this one's actually a relatively easy one because it's literally just a soft slope, but it does start to get a bit more tricky when you've got things like roots, um, rocks even, and turns and things. So that's a completely other board game, but once you got used to dropping in from somewhere at that height, then you can then take those skills to other features or other hills that have roots and things on and start to practice the same techniques and things on them ones. So we're going to move on now to hitting jumps. Right, moving on to jumps now and these are pretty scary to a lot of people because the kickers can be quite steep, they can also be quite tall and it also depends on what kind of gap you've got. Here we've got a table which is the safest jump to learn on because you can just you can even roll up it or if you want to try and get a little bit of air then you can jump it to the deck but the scariest ones are the ones with gaps in so 
Today we're just going to talk about tables, but this specific jump is actually my favourite one here in Danbury. I'm riding it all the time, but believe it or not, I used to just roll it because it was really, really scary. Like, I hated the fact that I would be really upright on the bike like this, going up the lip, and I always used to, like, clamp my legs together and stuff. And that's purely because of nerves, and once you've practised and you've hit it a few times, then you do start to loosen up. Like, even now, like, I can get good air on this jump, but I'm still pretty stiff, and it's just where I'm not used to jumping, and also the conditions. It depends on the conditions as well. Like, today it's pretty wet and boggy so it's going to run a lot different to what it would in the dry but the things that I tend to do is the first couple of jumps just take it easy nice and slow air it a little bit but even just roll it for the first few times just to get the feeling back and then gradually build up to starting to air it a lot more it doesn't happen overnight and it definitely won't happen in a day either so you've got to persevere and be patient because the last thing you want is to go full speed really quickly out of control not really knowing what to do and air it and crash um, so I'm gonna hit it a few times so you guys can see but yeah this is one of my favorite jumps here Another tip that I would give you guys as beginners starting out hitting sort of these features for the first time is that if you've gone out with a group of friends that are perhaps a little bit more advanced then don't be scared to say I want to go and hit some smaller ones even if you go and ride it with some other people that are the same sort of level to you then it's better to do that than to follow the crowd or follow your mates and hit the bigger jumps because it's going to knock your confidence if you do crash and it's better to start small like I say and then gradually build up our final feature for this video is to talk about step downs and you might have seen from one of Tom's videos recently I hit the Emsby hopper ramp into a step down and we've got it here again today and I have to say this does not get any easier I'm still petrified of this feature what I find scary about things like this is as you're approaching it all you can see is this scary wooden kicker and you can't see the landing until you're into the ramp and obviously by that point if you change your mind it's a little bit too late because you want to have committed by that point and then get into the landing and land safely whereas if you stop here you're going to potentially go over the bars and things are going to start to go wrong so what I do for this sort of thing is you might have seen in Tom's video I started absolutely miles back and it was because I was sat in the rolling looking at this for far too long and it really put me off so I started away from it so that I could get a good run up get set on the bike feel comfortable then look at the ramp commit and take off ride the ramp properly and land it's time it's time for me now i've started chatting for too long that's because i know it's coming i've got to ride this again and in tom's video we took it to a steeper slope and i didn't want to ride that and i'm definitely going to save that for another video so if you guys want to see that then comment below and tell me that i've got to do it but for the purpose of this one we're just going to set it up here it's quite an easy slope so if you guys want to practice this kind of thing then make sure you obviously like i've said throughout this whole video is start small and then work your way up is that all right that speed though a bit quicker One thing that Tom made me do though was, and he's probably going to agree, he's behind the camera, is once you've done it once and you're scared about it, keep doing it because the more you do it and the more you practice it, the easier it will become and the less scared of it you'll be. So that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to do it again and just get the scaredness out of my head. 
<laughs> that was epic. Like, I've definitely learnt the speed now, whereas before I had no idea what speed it was that I needed to get into that. But yeah, it's becoming easier now. I think we should do one in slow motion so you can see exactly how I ride the ramp and land and stuff. That's actually now becoming really fun to ride and I'm not as nervous or as scared to ride it. Perhaps if we were to come back another day and set this up again then you'd get that nervy feeling but once you've ridden it a few times and you're used to it then it's actually really really fun but that is the end of the video now I hope some of the things that I've mentioned in here are useful or you can take bits from this video I definitely think that there's a lot more to be said about overcoming fear and like learning how to rise different features we could do so many more different videos like an escape park perhaps or doing some downhill trails if you've got any ideas put it in the comments and we'll be sure to make those videos but I hope you guys have enjoyed this one if you have give it a thumbs up put your comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video bye